Please be seated. Please turn off all electronic devices. No flash photography during the service is allowed. This evening is being live streamed and recorded. Each year, the class chooses a verse in Theology One, their sophomore year. They study, discuss, look at different translations and decide together the class they would most like to be associated with what verse? Through God's perfect design, the senior class verse always seems appropriate for evenings or years such as this. This year's class verse is Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. We are here to celebrate a wonderful occasion, the commencement of our senior class of 2022. To help us celebrate, we invite Mr. and Mrs. Leinbarger to the stage. Yes, you can go ahead. The Leinbargers have been with Coram Deo Academy since 2002. After tonight, all five of their children, Grace, Cole, Brady, Lana, Lana, I knew I was, I know that, and Tessa, will have completed their educational journeys at Coram Deo Academy. Coram Deo Academy has not known a school year without multiple Linebarger children for 20 years. We honor you tonight. <laughs> And thank you for your tuition. <laughs> but we do honor them tonight, as well as the graduates, and we thank you for your support that you have so clearly shown to Coram Deo Academy throughout the years, and we will dearly miss your family. That certainly sounds more impressive than it felt along the way. <laughs> so, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, you are so good. And we're reminded this evening that you are good to us indeed. 
We're thankful for this occasion, um, this celebratory time that we have together. I also want to thank you for the school that uh, we've been a part of and these families are, have been a part of for so many years. We're thankful for their uh, stewardship of our children and their desire to teach them um, the way that they should go. We're thankful for the families that are represented here and the, uh, the teachers, the hours that the teachers have poured into the hearts and minds of our children. And we're so thankful for the graduates. We pray that you would bless them, Father God. <clears throat> we pray that your hand would be upon them. We pray that they would seek you uh, as, when they face good times and bad times, and, and when they do seek you, that they would find you to be their wonderful counselor and their uh, strong tower and their provider. We ask, Father God, that you would give us uh, joy this evening as we mark this celebration. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. for the processional of the faculty. Recognizing the achievements of these soon to be graduates comes from years of service to their educational needs. We welcome the dedicated faculty of Coram Deo Academy, Flower Mounds Campus to the commencement ceremony of 2022. Grammar School faculty led by junior class banner bearer, Ross Weish. School faculty, led by junior class banner bearer, Marshall Humphrey. School faculty led by banner bearer junior class Luke Newton. Recognize your faculty. We are grateful to be here tonight in person with the families of the seniors, with all the CDA families and students and their guests. We welcome the audience that is watching online. We thank the faculty, staff, and CDA board for their dedication. We are Coram Deo Academy, educating in the presence of Almighty God. Please remain standing for the graduating class of 2022, Banner Bearer, Dean of Students, Mr. Matthew Holland.
may be seated. It's important that this night we remember the ones who went before this class, our alumni, setting straight their path and proving that a classical Christian education is one that teaches students to read well, write beautifully, speak confidently, and think critically. At the end of this ceremony, Coram Deo Academy will have 875 graduates. We have a tradition of honoring our legacy class on their 10-year anniversary, and the class of 2012 are found within the following fields. In technology, we have a Georgia Tech graduate working as a software engineer for a major retailer. In ministry, we have a Tarleton State graduate who is an assistant priest in Southlake. In education and business, we have a University of Texas of Austin graduate, high school pre-AP world geography, seventh through 12th grade certified teacher. We also have a Texas Tech graduate marketing coordinator at a major construction company at an Oklahoma State University graduate in marketing and media relation. In government and law, we have a graduate of the University of Hong Kong Law School. And we have a graduate of Wheaton serving as a legislative associate for the Illinois governor. In the medical and science fields, we have graduates of the University of Rochester, New York, and the University of Texas Medical Branch, emergency medicine resident, and the University of Texas of Austin graduate, botany field technician at the National Ecological Observatory. Several of our alumni are happily married and many have children. We are proud of all that they have accomplished and we thank our alumni for staying in touch. Congratulations to all our alumni. Please remember, after the ceremony, please come to the stage for an alum alumni photo. Our mission at Coram Deo Academy is to train ethical servant leaders and wise thinkers who will shape the culture for the glory of God. There are 17 students wearing the white cords and graduating in 2022 who began their educational journey with us in kindergarten. With those students, <laughs> along with their parents, please stand. Lindsay Anderson. <laughs> Kirsten Brown. <laughs> Madeline Casper. <laughs> Dylan Chubb. Kate Clevenger, parents remain standing with your children. Sally Davis, Alana Esbenberger, Anna Guyon, Ryan Henderson, Jackson Hilrich, Ella Holland, Sydney Huggins, McKenna Johnson, Ava Grace Cooley, Caroline Coons, Seth Livingston, and Ashlyn Richard. Did I miss anybody? With us tonight is one of their kindergarten teachers. Please stand, Mrs. Coral Tolman. Thank you for your support of Coram Day Academies. Parents and Mrs. Tolman, please be seated. All seniors, please stand. Seniors, we honor your achievement tonight because we recognize your gifts and talents come from Almighty God. And through you and these divinely appointed gifts, others who encounter you may know that he is Lord. We pray that you will remain steadfast in your faith as Colossians 2, 6 through 9, when it says, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy or empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him 
the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. Seniors, you may be seated. Tonight, we say goodbye to several of our choir members. The CDA Choir is under the direction of Mrs. Sharon Miller. As they come to the stage, they will present to us a special choral piece of our school song. The senior choir members will join to sing with Electus Vox for the last time.
If you want to know what a school is about, check out that school's school song, and it will tell you a lot. And because we take our faith seriously, we also invite very special speakers to our commencement. Tonight, we have Matt Chandler, who serves as the lead pastor at the Village Church in Flower Mound, Texas. He came to the village in December 2002, and he describes his tenure as a replanting effort where he was involved in changing the theological and philosophical culture of the congregation. Matt is currently involved in church planting efforts both locally and internationally through the village and very various strategic partnerships. His greatest joy is Jesus. And outside of that, it is being married to his wonderful wife, Lauren, and being a dad to his three great children, Audrey, Reed, and Nora. Please join me in welcoming Pastor Chandler. I mean, you did it. Can you believe that? Like, I can't believe it. it like, we're here. And, and so congratulations, class of 2022, and to moms and dads, a lot of moist eyes already. I even asked a couple of you how you were doing, and then I just backed away. Uh, and so I know this is an interesting uh, night for you. I, I guess in some ways it happened real fast, and in other ways it happened really slow, maybe especially the last two months, maybe especially the last two months. Uh, but here we are. Uh, celebrating the good grace of God on your life. And, and so as I, I thought about, like, like, what do you say to, to this group in particular? Like, to prepare, I got this stat list of your accomplishments, and it, it, it's absurd. Uh, I mean, it's like the kind of scholarship money, the opportunities. It, it's just you have put in the work, and the Lord is blessing that work. Psalm 139 says that God uniquely designed you in your mother's womb. The, the Bible says that he knit you together, and he uses this language uh, of our unformed substance as well as our form, which means both our physicality as well as our personality and intellect shaped and formed in our mother's womb. This isn't to deny biology, but to say that there's something bigger behind the biology. It's not to say that we don't know where babies come from. It's saying that we believe that behind the biology that the world embraces, there's a creator God that has a plan for you. In fact, at the end of Psalm 139, all of that creativity, your unformed substance, your physical frame, was for the days that he would make for you, which means that, that you were made for this day. Later on in Psalm 17, the Apostle Paul says that the boundaries and the times of our habitation were shaped and determined by God so that men might seek him and find him, though he is not far from any of us, which means, now, now I want you to feel the full weight of this, that you are God's big plan for this moment in human history, right? You, you're it. But like, there isn't an Augustine coming to save us, it's you, right? Like, for everyone you've read, those, what I hope, become ancient friends of yours. This day has not been given to Augustine. It was not given to C.S. Lewis. It was not given to Tolkien. It was not given to the Apostle Paul. It was not given to Corey Tim Boom. It was given to you, and it's a mess out there. Good luck. Let's pray. I'm just kidding. I have more for you. I have, I have a little bit more than that. Uh, and so I, I want you to feel both the beauty of that and the weight of it, because it is a mess out there. It, it is broken and polarized, but, but ask some questions, because it's always been, it's just your turn. It, it's just your turn. Hey, you can wind back the clock to the 60s, and it was a bit of a mess. Gas prices were about the same. It's just your turn, right? The country was divided, and everybody was wondering if there was a future. It's just your turn, the social fabric of the United States was unraveling like it did in the 1920s, and yet, it's your turn. It's yours, and you have been uniquely wired and uniquely placed by the God of the Bible for such a moment as this. So, so what do I say to you, right? Like, what do you say to, to this, right? Like, like super people, like a billion dollars in scholarship money or something like that. I, could, I don't have my glasses. I think it's something close to that. Uh, so, so, like, what do you say to, to this kind 
of 18, 17, 18 year old. Well, I'm just gonna take my cues um, from the Apostle Paul. What, what I wanna do is just re-gospel you. And, and that probably sounds like really elementary, like really, Chandler, you're gonna do the gospel? I'm just going, yeah, I'm gonna do the gospel because the Apostle Paul continually preaches the gospel to people who actually already know the gospel. It's like the gospel wasn't meant to just save you, but actually it was meant to be something greater than a past moment in your life, but maybe a future power and a present power for you to consistently live in. Maybe if we could get that, maybe if we could get that, uh, our churches would be far more powerful than they are. But I'll let Paul talk, not, not me yap and all this. So 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 1. Now, I would remind you brothers, right, that brothers, not, not pagans, I would remind you brothers, those in the church at Corinth of the gospel that I preached to you, and here we go, which you received. Now, if I was doing this in another venue, I was like, is that past tense? I don't even need to ask those questions. I know, gazillion dollars in scholarships. I don't have to ask any questions. I know you would answer them. Which you received, that's past tense. In which you stand, that's present tense. And by which you are being saved or you will be saved if you hold fast to the word I preach to you unless you believed in vain, that's future tense. So the gospel isn't something that happens to us back there. It's something that we're standing in right now, and it's something that will secure our future and make us unmovable in the day of trouble, right? Because here's what I know about your life. You've got magnificent victories coming. I mean, you've got the kind of nights where your cheeks and your ribs are sore the next day from laughter. It's coming for you. Uh, I mean, some of the most magnificent dreams imaginable you're going to achieve. It's going to be epic and amazing. And you've got suffering coming for you. You will be disappointed and discombobulated. Your faith will be tested. You will melt on the floor in tears and snot and there's nothing you can do about it. They're both coming. They're, they're both coming. You are closer now than maybe you've ever been, but you are God's big plan for this day, and in every epic victory and every disorienting failure, you'll find him to be near, but we must be rooted in this gospel. So I, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the past um, uh, implications of the gospel because I, I think you know them. You've, you've got this creator God of the universe that creates all that we know. And, and everything that was created was actually created to point us to him, which is why anything in creation that's not God himself never actually satisfies us. So food is a beautiful gift of God's grace meant to make us worship him. Right? And you fill in the blank, whether it's sex or money or, or, or vacation or work, everything was given to us by God so that we might understand the kind of God that he is and worship his name. It's like we were built for that end. And so sin enters the cosmos and fractures all of that. And then all of those good things become idols and they twist us and they break the cosmos all the way to the cellular level. And God moves towards his creation in that moment and not from them. And, and I wish I had more time to unpack that, but again, this is the part that, that I think you just know and breathe and live, and at some point in your life, because of mom and dad, be, be, maybe on your own, but you're a quorum day, at some point, because of your mom and dad, you got to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus isn't, love, isn't in love with some future version of you that his grace is available to you now, that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and, and he will not damn you for that, but he's moved towards you in the person and work of Jesus Christ. You believed by faith the Holy Spirit did the work of illumination, and, and you surrendered your life to Jesus, and, and you were either baptized or you weren't. I mean, there's different denominations here, right? You, 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 you pre-did it, right? You like pre-gamed salvation, and, and then, or you didn't. And, and so there's this moment in your past where you said, I, I surrendered my life to Jesus. I, I said yes as best as I understand, as best as I know. I'm saying yes to Jesus, and you became a Christian. You, you became a Christian in which you were saved. But, but then he moves on in the text, and he says, by which you now stand. And I, I really think that in the evangelical imagination, 
We've lost the reality of this. And I think a lot of the deconstruction you're seeing is actually tied to the fact that everybody thinks salvation is something that happened back then, and it's not something that's happening right now. I'm not saying you lose your salvation until you earn it every day. No, no, that's not what Paul's teaching here either. The apostle Paul is saying, hey, there is a power of the gospel. There's a power of the work of Jesus and the power of the spirit that's available to us in this moment. It's not like, hey, there was this moment where everything changed. It's that I have a living relationship with Jesus that's always changing everything in my life. Are you tracking with me? Okay, I'm guessing not. I'll, I'll try harder. <laughs> try harder. So I think when he, when he says here, in which you now stand, he, he's trying to pull their attention to some things that are universal in human experience. And here's what it is. Namely, you keep disappointing yourself and you keep falling short of the glory of God. Like you want to do the Ten Commandment test real quick? Anybody love things more than you love God right now? You don't need to raise your hand because you do. Like you score on the 10 commandments, you score a zero. And this is Coram Deo. Like you gotta have a 97 or you don't, like a zero? And God don't let you retake the test. Like it, that, you look at the 10 commandments, guilty, guilty, guilty. And I know some of you know this, you're like, I ain't never cheated on my spouse. You don't have to. I ain't never murdered anybody. You don't have to, remember Jesus? You have heard it said, but I say. So, so why, do, why does Paul keep preaching the gospel to people who already know it? Because we need to keep hearing it. Uh, because I keep falling short of the glory of God. I keep stumbling. I keep doing what I know is wrong. Now, less and less and less as, as I grow into maturity. But anybody be honest enough to go, man, I got some issues this week. All right, sis, thank you. One of you, great. I should have brought a different sermon. <laughs> I know, we fall short. So what does the gospel remind us? Every time we hear it, we hear again, it's my righteousness, it's not your righteousness. It's not what you earned, it's what I gave. Now, if I don't hear that, I'm gonna run from God rather than to him. If I don't hear that and you like front load moralistic deism on me or anybody else, you make them, you force them to run from God. But if the gospel's the lead foot and the gospel's not, hey, you got saved when you were seven, but the gospel is right here, right now, power of God unto salvation, then no matter what I'm, past, present, or future, I'm secure in his love. And you're gonna blow it. You're gonna blow it in ways you don't think you're gonna blow it, even now. Maybe especially if you're there going, not me, especially you. (laughs) Right, now you're gonna disappoint your folks. Some of you are like, already there, it's fine. (laughs) Like, you're gonna, you're, gonna let them, you're gonna let yourself down. I'm telling you, you're gonna do things that make you nauseous about yourself. And if you don't get this in that moment, you don't get that that's what Jesus is all about, that's what the gospel is all about. Not you at your best, like, not you today, right? With your cap and gown, all the tassels. Not, not that version of you. The, the one that, that blew it and broke it and is barely hanging in there, that's the gospel in which you now stand. So so what does it practically look like, right? Like what does it practically look like to presently stand in the gospel? Man, I'm glad you asked because that's the bulk of the sermon. So uh, I I think it looks like two things in particular. Like what does it look like to stand? Not to just go, hey, when I was seven, my mom came to me and said, hey, do you wanna come to heaven or do you wanna go to hell forever? And I was like, heaven with you. And, And not that, not this thing back here. Like what does it look like now? Like to stand in it. To, to be in the gospel, to be unmovable, saturated in the gospel right now. And that's not determined on how well you're doing. All right? Type A. It's not, it's, not, it's not tied to your list if you're tracking with me. Right, so what does it look like? Well, I think it looks like two things. Here's the first one. What does it look like to stand in the gospel? Here, here's number one. Believing that you've been set free from your sinful nature. You ready? What does it look like to stand in the gospel? So not back here. Like seven-year-old, uh, baptize me, sprinkle, whatever. All right, I don't know what to do with the baptism illustration. I'm going to back away from it, right? Uh, like back here, you give your life to Jesus, and, and now you're in the present. He, he's saying what it looks like to stand in it now is to not look back like the gospel is simply a door that you walked through, but for you to embrace the power of the gospel in your present life, namely that you are no longer under the power of sin, but have been given by the Holy Spirit Victory. Now, that doesn't mean you're nailing it. Amen? Like, that doesn't mean you're nailing it, praise God. But, but it means that by the grace of God and by the indwelling power of the Spirit, 
you are not that thing you struggle with. It is a painful reality right now how eager we are to own our struggles as primary identity. Have you picked up on that? Again, I don't know where all of you go to church. I see some of my folk in here. But, but a lot of, I'm telling you, a lot of people, they, they, their identity is this struggle that they have. Well, that's anti-gospel stuff. That's not the gospel. The gospel's not, that's not your primary identity. Again, let's go back to Paul. He's smarter than me. Well, yeah, he, yeah, I didn't even say well there. He's very, yeah. Romans 6, starting in verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. It's actually stronger than that. He, he's saying, shall we sin all the more? Shall we just keep on sinning because God's grace is so big, we should just do whatever we want, and we know we're going to be all right. Well, by no means is actually really strong in the Greece. He, he, he's actually going, yeah, you, you actually can't do that. Might even be able to translate it. You're damned if you do. You can also translate that. You're not a Christian if. It might be a little too strong for a commencement, but, but maybe the big gift I give you tonight is to realize that you've never owned your faith for yourself, and it's been mom and dad's faith. And maybe tonight the best thing I could ever do for you is to give you an opportunity to go, I don't want my mom and dad's faith. I want my own. You tracking with me? Mom and dad's faith ain't going to get you there. It's just not, and they're awesome, I guess. I mean, I'm guessing. Look at you. But, but their faith, their love for the word of God, the spirit indwelling them will not get you there. It'll have to be yours. And so Paul says, shall we sin all the more so that grace may abound? You can't do that. That doesn't work. You're damned if you do. And then he, then he moves on uh, to this next place by saying, how can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us has been baptized into Christ Jesus? We were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into his death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So, so you, whatever that thing is, whatever that struggle is, whatever our issues are, Paul is arguing died on the cross with Jesus Christ so that your primary identity and my primary identity it isn't that, man, I, I'm addicted to this or I struggle with this or I have this secret or I did this once upon a time, but rather that you're a son or daughter of God, that you're a priest in the household of faith. This is your lead foot. This is your lead identity. If you do what's so popular in this generation and just kind of own the struggle, I have this sinful compulsion. I have, and you do that thing that happens all over the place where every time you go to your home group or Sunday school class, it's like, how you doing, Bill? Man, I'm just, just did it again, bro. Happened again. I, I guess I just, and, and if you own your compulsions as your primary identity, that's not standing in the gospel. Standing in the gospel is owning what God has said is true about me. Now, now, if you think about hey, that, that, that enables you to be extremely violent towards your sin, right? To weaponize what God has spoken over you against your own thoughts about yourself and your own compulsions and the whispers of the enemy in your ear. Listen, I, I still live this. I've been following Jesus for 30 years, and I can't tell you how often uh, I will get in my ear, in my spirit, some sort of accusation meant to take me out of the fight and make me a spectator, to let me believe that it's somebody else's day, not mine. Listen, the enemy can't have you fully activated. He needs you in the stands cheering on professional Christians. But that's not right. The day was made for you, not blue check folk. You were made for the day. The day was made for you. So we stand in what God has said about us in Christ, that there is no condemnation for us. Do you believe that? Like, here, here, like all of your sin, I gotta speed up. All of your sin, past, present, future, fully, freely, and forever forgiven. Are you tracking me? All of it, past, present, future, fully, freely, and forever forgiven. That's standing in the gospel, believing that. So if I feel shame, I know I gotta fight back against that by telling uh, whatever that is tempting me, my own flesh, the evil spirits. I gotta remind them that there's no condemnation for me, that God is for me, he is not against me. I just, Romans 8 will help you put a beating on the enemy. I mean, just a beating on the enemy, just a great chapter for spiritual warfare. And, and then out of that, and I just wanna encourage you, I, I wanna encourage you, part of this is being very violent towards your sin. 
Like, don't, you've been given victory by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Don't tolerate sin in your life, not even the small ones. I saw this show years ago called When Animals Attack. What, I'm sorry. And this lion attacked this woman. And then they interviewed the trainer afterwards. He's like, it's inexplicable. And I'm like, it's a lion. It's an, it's an apex predator. God made it just to kill stuff. Like it doesn't have another purpose. But he thought, because when he got it, it was little. And he had trained it and he had spent all that time with it that he could control it. Sin's a little bit like that. Be violent against your sin. Attack it. Kill it. What's your primary weapon? Your primary weapon and this is the second thing on what it means to stand in the gospel presently, is the ongoing ethics of confession and repentance. Here, look at me, I love you. To be 99% known is to be completely unknown. The enemy's gonna try to convince you to keep back that shameful thing you don't want anybody to know about you, and that's the thing he'll use to crush you the rest of your life. You don't have to do that. There's grace for you, there's mercy for you. There's forgiveness for you. Don't let him take from you what's rightfully yours. To be 99% known is to be unknown. Walk in the light. Surefire way to punch the enemy in the face is to drag him into the light. He doesn't like the light. He likes to play in darkness, which is why he uses shame so effectively to keep you quiet about secrets. And don't think I'm not talking over here either. <laughs> right? I've been in this game long enough. It ain't just over here. It's all up here. All right? Lastly, he moves on from this present, this is what it looks like to stand in the gospel in the present, to this weird sentence at the end. He says, by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word that I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Isn't it funny that what he ties the gospel's longevity in our life to is just our willingness to believe everything I just said. Like, how, how's our future secure? Our future is secure because in this moment, I'm going to stand in the gospel. I'm going to believe that what God has said about me is true. I'm going to stand and believe that I am not determined by my compulsions, but rather have been given victory by the King of kings and Lord of lords. I'm going to believe that day in and day out. And when I blow it, I want to believe that. And when I'm killing it, I want to believe that. So you're, you're heading all over the place. I think 90% of you going to AM or something like that. But you're, you're, hey, gig them. Uh, but listen, stand in the gospel. I, I hate that you're growing up in the world that you're growing up in, and then I get real excited. When we have these kind of social upheavals fire up, there always seems to be some sort of corresponding revival that comes along with it. And that usually doesn't, it doesn't start with old fool, fools like me. It starts like Papa Chandler doesn't lead it. It's, it's men and women like you, young and zealous for the name of the Lord. I'm praying for you. You are going to experience magnificent victories. And don't believe the lie that the default setting of humanity is happy, spirit-sprinkled shallowness. Suffering's normal. And, and Jesus is good. You can believe both of those. I'm just going to pray for you. And I did all right. Only one a minute and 40 over. That's not bad. Let me, let me pray for you. <laughs> Father, I bless these young men and women in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Gosh, so much work represented here. You, you gave us work as a good gift. Thank you that they, they've learned what it means to sweat it out. They've learned what it means to stay up later than they wanted, to get up earlier than they wanted. They, they learned how, in a really unique way, to be wrung out for the purpose of beauty, truth, and grace. And so I pray a prayer of protection over them. The enemy has plans, schemes. Uh, there are professors waiting for them. There are new friend groups laying in wait for them that will challenge them in ways that will test and pull and shake and ring. And I just ask for zeal for your name, for the gift of faith and protection over them. And I thank you that out there all over the world, there are men and women who when all is said and done, We'll love you, follow you, and worship you because of the testimony of these young men and women. Thank you that you've counted me uh, among them as your sons and daughters. We bless you. It's for your beautiful name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. At this time, please welcome our salutatorian, J.B. Lilly. All 
All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, as my classmates are probably all too well aware at this point, it would not truly be a speech for me if it did not involve some tangent into ancient history. So to begin my speech, here is a Latin lesson. The word salutatorian comes from the Latin salutare, which means literally to be well, and can mean to salute, to greet, to give respect, and very occasionally to bid farewell. It is my honor to conclude our high school career with a farewell message, which uh, sadly means that yes, after two quarters of senior author presentations and history lectures, means that we still have a few more student presentations to get through. <laughs> 10 minutes, guys, come on, we can do it. All right. Now, there is a common theme to some of our favorite memories of high school. Now, uh, for legal reasons, I am not allowed to mention the names of my classmates during this speech. Uh, <laughs> names have been omitted to protect the guilty. <laughs> I remember in freshman year, there was the time a certain student was dared to jump in the lake for $10 and actually did it, or when he did it again for free in sophomore year. <laughs> or the time at the end of junior year that someone's car keys got thrown in the lake. <laughs> or every day in Mr. Huddleston's calculus class this year when we played four square outside on the break and lost at least one ball to the lake every day. Come to think of it, that lake might have been the single biggest villain in our high school career. <laughs> when discussing this, this speech a few weeks ago, Mrs. Powell mentioned the curious fact that water has played a role in all of these memories. Water also forms a motif that is echoed throughout the Holy Scriptures. Water in the New Testament is associated with redemption because the depths of the abyss are the very image of chaos in the Old Testament. It is into the waters of the Red Sea that uh, the Pharaoh's chariots attempted to drive the Israelites, and into those same waters that the Amalekites attempted to drive them onto the other side. From the waters emerges Leviathan, the chaos monster that is, eventually in the literature of the intertestamental period, carved up by God and served at the marriage supper of the Lamb. It, for it is from the formless waste of water that God created the earth in Genesis, and in the end of the revelation of John, there is no sea. Jonah, in a type of Christ's sacrifice, suffered a death by the sea and resurrection from the sea, spending three days in the bowels of a great monster of the deep to be saved supernaturally by God. To receive baptism is to undergo a death in the mold of Christ, what he called the sign of Jonah in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. And it is further for this reason that the Didache, the earliest extra-biblical Christian literature, recommends that baptism take place in living, that is, flowing, turbulent waters. Hopefully, we might emerge from the chaotic swirl of the last few years into a life instructed by what we have learned here. It is our responsibility to practice what we have learned at CDA, certainly in terms of academics, but even more so as Christians. The greatest lessons we have learned in high school have been provided by our teachers. The theological discussions we've had in Mrs. Powell's literature class Mr. Brewster's philosophy lessons to open trigonometry, Mrs. Schober's enthusiasm when discussing a new scientific discovery, or Mrs. Blair and Mrs. Gaskamp's perseverance and dedication in the face of their physical adversities. The examples of our teachers through their love of God, truth, and knowledge have taught us as much as their lessons. As we look forward to college, careers, and whatever else might come, those lessons, more than any others, will continue to instruct us. Of course, our education will continue, as n neither of these speeches will be a true farewell. Most of us will attend college in just a few months, starting over as freshmen. Some of us will even continue on to law school, medical school, graduate school, or PhD programs. For many of us, this ceremony could very well be the halfway mark, rather than the end. Regardless of where and when a truer farewell might come, it too will not be the end. That which we began when we entered CDA will continue to echo in our lives and the lives of those around us. The values instilled by our education, devotion, integrity, and diligence will always guide how we think and act. I would be truly remiss, though, if I did not close off my high school career by thanking my friends and family for all their encouragement and support. I think Quorum Day was the only school in the world where I can leave Latin phrases scrawled on the whiteboard, go on rants about Denton County traffic patterns, and still somehow be popularly elected to the senior council by my long-suffering classmates. <laughs> I am truly grateful to each of you and for all of our teachers and administrators. Finally, oh dear, my tassel. All right, <laughs> almost done. All right, finally, mom, dad, and Parker. I can never do any justice to my thankfulness for your love and support in just a few sentences of this speech. 
Mom and Dad, I love you both, and I would not be where I am, and more importantly, who I am without you. In other words, Dad, it's your fault too. <laughs> Last but not least, I want to thank my sister Parker for always being a ray of sunshine in our lives. I know that you and all the other members of the current freshman class will go on to do great things. Who knows? Maybe one of you will finally get a wall built around that lake so we stop losing <laughs> basketballs. We are sailing into new waters as we depart CDA, but God promised us a path through the chaos present in our own lives. As he spoke through the prophet Isaiah, quote, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I formed and made. I will finally leave you with the words of the Apostle Paul as he closed his letter to the church at Philippi. Quote, God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Please welcome our valedictorian, Lauren Smith. They warned me about giving a speech in heels, but they did not warn me about the stairs, so we're not gonna fall today. I love to go to museums. I like to walk through, stopping whenever a masterpiece catches my eye. When I look at the artwork, I try to really examine it and consider what the artist was thinking when he created the work. I try to notice the details, but no matter how hard I try, I can never truly see everything the artist intended. I end up being like the man walking through the museum in Auden's Musée des Beaux Arts, who was struck by Bruegel's The Fall of Icarus, capturing the moment when having flown too close to the sun on wings held together by wax, Icarus plunges into the sea. The uniqueness of this painting, however, is that Icarus's fall is in the background, is in the details, and thus often missed by those who only see the landscape surrounding it. They do not notice the man falling to his death. Details matter. Henry Nouwen's description of Rembrandt's The Prodigal Son also remind us that details matter. The focal point for me was on the father and the son, but Nouwen pointed out that Rembrandt's details were also important. The sword the son kept and the ragged sandals point both to brokenness, but also to clinging to one's sonship. Now one wrote, this man is dispossessed of everything, except for one thing, his sword. Even in the midst of his debasement, he had clung to the truth that he still was the son of his father. CDA has also taught me to see the beauty in the details. Whether it be in science class or in English class, details matter. Although I did not take AP art history with Mrs. Kendall, God placed her in my life for a few minutes on Tuesdays and Thursdays in study hall. Mrs. Kendall reminded me that God is the author of beauty and is the one who gave me a desire to create. She pointed out that the details of the painting are important and that there is much beauty found in the ordinary. She also reminded me that humans are God's creation and he cares very about, much about the details of our lives. Mrs. Kendall emulates this by always remembering to ask about the details of my life, whether, whether it's by asking about my soccer games or my senior author. But what is even more amazing that she would ask about how they went after they happened. After asking about a soccer game, the day after, she would ask about how it went. The same with my senior author. She would remember the details, and she truly cared about them. When we look back at our time at CDA, we will remember the big events, such as senior author, paint wars, and football games. But the hope is 
that we will not only remember the big events, but cherish the small details. Provided the Christocentric education, we are shown Christ in everything. Chemistry specifically revealed God's glory and made evident his intelligent design. Chemistry did this because it showed me the details. One example is how a water is denser than ice. For almost everything else, the solid is denser than the liquid. Since ice is less dense, when lakes freeze, only the tops freeze. This insulates the lake so the fish survive. We are taught to view science as Blaise Pascal did, as science as entwined with God, as science as evidence for God. The more we know, the more we wonder and are in awe at his design. We are not just taught differently though, but we function in a different culture. Public schools are not allowed to pray in the morning, but we have daily chapels and devotionals. Before we begin class, we get to discuss the love of God or simply read about how he provides for Joseph, even when Joseph was thrown into prison. As a school, we get to fill our gym to worship God together. There are a few places where the whole school gathers to worship. We see the beauty of God and his beauty of God and his word daily in chapels and devotionals. But this is not the only place we see beauty. When we walk down the halls of the school, we are surrounded by great works of art, not posters saying not to drink or to stay off drugs. When we go to college, we will not be surrounded only by beauty, but with signs supporting abortion and whatnot. So we must be intentional for looking for beauty around us. There's evidence of God in his creation in your fellow classmates, and in your daily lives, focus on the good, the true, and the beautiful. Academics and artworks are not the only beautiful details at CDA. The family that CDA provides is beautiful too. The most of you know that I played soccer, and if not, I played soccer. <laughs> I came here freshman year, and soccer was how I got plugged in. Everyone here has felt the love of the CDA family in one way or another, a family where everyone is important. I experienced the CDA family through my soccer team. By the end of the season, we were all battered and bruised. Our goalkeeper was especially beat up. She had run a marathon, broke her toe, and something weird to her neck. It had been easy for her to just give up and stop, but she did not. She fought even harder because she did not fight for herself, but she fought for her teammates, her family, her sisters. As we go off to college, it would do well to remember this. It is not about how much money we make or the positions we attain. Rather, it is about glorifying God in all we do and, and loving our fellow man, remembering, me, remembering that we are all imago dei, or made in the image of God. Career and lives that bring us only earthly riches will not bring us eternal satisfaction. Christ alone can do this. In Christ's earthly mission, he did not care about wealth, but he cared about people. He ate with the prostitutes and tax collectors. He called Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector down from the sycamore tree. He cares about sinners. God cares about us so much that he cares about the details of our lives. When we learned about Henry Nowen, Dr. H told us about how and where he died. Nowen had a heart attack on a plane from Canada to Russia, but God brought the plane down where he was born, the Netherlands, so Nowen could die at home. If God cares about the details, how much more should we focus on them? How should we look for the beauty of God in our world around us? Now, G.K. Chesterton was my senior author. He wrote much about seeing the beauty in the ordinary or in the details. In his first famous novel, The Napoleon of Notting Hill, he writes that the main character was the first to realize how often the boundary of fairyland runs through a crowded city. Now, a crowded city can be full of dirty streets, not the most savory people, and everyday things. Yet this is where Chesterton sees the magical. He sees the divine all around him. Just as Chesterton sees the magical in the busy streets, or as Mrs. Kendall sees the handiwork of the one true artist in the people and places around her, as we go forward, look for the beautiful, the magical, the details in the ordinary, for the heavens proclaim his glory and his handiwork is all around us. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, the Senior Council will present the class gift and special words of appreciation. McKinnon Johnson, 
Hannah McKittrick, and J.B. Lilly. Throughout this school year, Hannah and I had the opportunity to be on Senior Council along with our classmate JB. The responsibility of the Senior Council comes in all different forms. One in particular is raising money throughout the year to purchase a gift to leave for the school. There are, throughout many fundraisers like the Dunk Tank, Jeans Day, Homecoming Shirts, and Powder Puff, our class was able to raise the most money than any other. During our Senior Council meeting, all three of us decided that we wanted to leave a gift different from any other. So many of the previous gifts have been amazing additions to Cormdale campus. However, we, as the class of 2022, wanted to leave a gift that would include all members of the Cormdale family, both big and small. Because of this, we've decided to put forth our raised money to renovate the high school building bathrooms. They've been used by many students for many years and could certainly use some new updates and additions. We've already started by putting a fresh paint of coat, a fresh coat of paint, which some of you may have already seen. Although it may not look like much has been done, it is still very much a work in progress. We have planned to replace the countertops and faucets, place a custom wooden frame around the mirrors, and hang some artwork on the walls. Since the bathroom in the high school building is a very central place, we hope this addition to CDA will positively affect everyone who has the opportunity to use it. We're excited to see all the progress that will come once it is all completed, and we are very proud to say that we have left a gift behind that will certainly be recognized by all who visit CDA. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't spring for the plaque, so the, the bathroom was, will not, unfortunately, say brought to you by uh, class of 2022. Uh, but no, um, uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is J.B. Lilly, and I also serve on the Senior Council alongside Hannah and McKenna, and I have the privilege of speaking about the Teacher of the Year for the class of 2022. Now, collectively as a class, we drew up a list a few months ago of teachers who have made a valuable impact on our high school careers. After voting, we are very pleased to present one of our ninth grade teachers with this award. We first had classes with this teacher in seventh grade and then two classes in ninth grade. This teacher was always warm, accommodating, and approachable for every single member of our class. In spite of two knee replacement surgeries, her enthusiasm for teaching ancient Greek literature and English history did not diminish a bit. Now, sadly, our very early senior gift plan circulated in sophomore year to get her a segue did not pan out. <laughs> She has been an invaluable mentor, teacher, and friend to myself and every student who has ever had the joy of learning from her. So, Mrs. Blair, thank you for being a wonderful teacher, and though it is not a segue, I am very happy to present this award to you on behalf of the class of 2022. Will the following students and Coach Kelly please come to the stage? It is my honor to recognize these four students who have received scholarships that are valued at $100,000 or more. Annabelle Buckner, Zach McCauley, <laughs> Abigail Patno, <laughs> Benjamin Sheegan. Yeah. 
Right here. Okay. Annabelle. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You have received the University of Alabama Presidential Scholarship. Does Alabama have anything they say? Like Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> It's valued at $120,000. It's full tuition for four years. Congratulations, Annabelle. <laughs> Abigail Patnode, you have received a $128,000 scholarship to St. Mary's College for Academics, and you will play soccer. Congratulations. <laughs> Ben Sheegan, you have received the Austin College Presidential Scholarship valued at over $188,000, full tuition, four years. Congratulations, Mr. Sheegan. With me being a U.S. Army combat veteran, I am especially honored to present Zach McCauley with this scholarship. Zach has received a National ROTC scholarship and will be attending Wheaton College. The scholarship is full tuition for four years with multiple enhancements. Congratulations to Zach and to everyone on, on the stage. Christ is foremost in all of our lives, as should be, or we hope he will be. But we are proud of your accomplishments as well. Class of 2022, please stand. This year alone, we have a class of 74 students, and 49 of them are from the Flower Mound campus. There are among these students three National Merit Commended students three national Hispanic scholars, and one national indigenous scholar. They will be attending 26 distinct colleges across the country and internationally this fall. 80% of you were accepted to your first choice college. 15 students have been accepted and elected to go into honors colleges at the schools that you will be attending. Two students are taking gap years, and one is entering a career directly from Coram Deo Academy. The class of 2022 was offered over $5.5 million, and you are accepting $1.6 million. Four students, as you just saw, were offered scholarships of over $100,000, and 13 of you were offered presidential or provost scholarships. Three athletes will be, are currently committed to participate in NCAA college athletics in football and soccer and swimming. 41% of you are attending a college out of state. 33% of you are attending a Christian college. 41% of you are pursuing a STEM degree. 16% of you are pursuing business-related degrees, and this is the most important thing about this class. 92% of you volunteer at your church or in your community. You serve your community. 43% have been on a mission trip in high school. Please continue to serve your community and your God. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Seniors, please be seated. It is my honor and privilege to present to you the graduating class of 2022. These students have met or exceeded the graduation requirements of Coram Deo Academy. Dean of Students, Mr. Matthew Holland, will read the graduate names for the conferring of the diplomas. Congratulations, seniors.
Congratulations, seniors. Please come forward when I call your names. <laughs> Luis Caroline Adams. <laughs> Luis will attend Wheaton College, where she will major in applied health science. Luis, while at CDA, was able to share the gospel through music in Costa Rica, Costa Rica and Alaska with Alexis Fox. She qualified for a national swim meet this summer after placing second at the state games of Texas in 2021. Luis will also be swimming as an NCAA collegiate athlete at Wheaton College. Thank you so much, Luis. Great job. <laughs> Lindsay Elise Anderson. Lindsay will be attending the University of Texas at Austin, where she will major in philosophy. Lindsay received three solo and four ensemble awards during her time in band in high school. She's proud of her service opportunities at church as well, and we are also proud of the way that you've served in ministry. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Good job. <laughs> David William Arnold. David is going to major in radio, television, and film at the University of Texas at Austin. He remembers two things he's accomplished that he's very proud of at CDA. One of those is that he received the National Presidential Award for Service through volunteering at the Young Men's Service League. And also he was able to uh, perform and uh, work on his first professional media uh, project with his good friend Drake Livingston. Thank you so much, David. Great job. <laughs> Alexa Noel Barthel. Alexa is going to Iowa State University where she will major in industrial design. When she thinks about her time at Quorum Day, she remembers uh, that she was able to make it to state in the Texas Choir Solo Ensemble Contest for her choir solo during her sophomore year. And she made it to state in the regional vase art competition during her senior year. She's very multi-talented. Thank you so much, Alexa. Great job. <laughs> Michaela Cora Bell. Mickey is taking a gap year this year. She decides what to do next with her uh, further studies. She is very proud of her time at CDA that she was able to serve as the president of the house at Homer, and she was the vice president during her junior year as well. Also, while participating in the house, she won the House of Video Award for um, what, directing and producing. A lot of that stuff, yeah, like a huge part of the House Video Award for Homer. Great job, Mickey. Thank you. <laughs> Adam Judson Branch. Adam will be a Red Raider at Texas Tech University. Well, he will major in creative media. When the 11th grade, participating in a track, Adam dropped his mile track time in almost a minute over just a two-week period. Uh, he has also stayed in guitar and competed in athletics all four years of high school. And this year, you went out for basketball. You were one of our senior performers there. Thank you so much, Adam. Great job. <laughs> Kirsten McKenzie Brown will major in biomedical engineering at Texas A&M University. Yep. <laughs> she is most proud of becoming a, the varsity cheer captain during her senior year, and also while performing in band, she was able to make regional band, performing state solos every year during high school. Thank you so much, Kirsten. Great job. <laughs> Annabelle Catherine Buckner. Annabelle is going to the University of Alabama, where she will major in biobehavioral nutrition. One of her favorite memories from CDA was that as a, she earned the Girl Scout Silver Award with the support of the rest of her CDA community. And with the help of her team, she was able, able to donate 100 bags stuffed full of items that children would need their first night in foster care. She's also loved the sports and activities she's been a part of at CDA, between being a yell leader, soccer, and tennis, and especially cross country. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Great job. Sarah Michael Cannon. Sarah is going to major in English, just like I did, by the way. Good job. At the University of Arkansas. Her proudest achievement, yep. Her proudest achievement during high school is actually being her mother's daughter. And we also love the way that you love your family. Thank you so much, Sarah. Great job. Madeline Faith Casper. 
Madeline is also going to the University of Arkansas, where she will major in nursing. Yep, big, yep. <laughs> Madeline would like you all to know that she trusted in Christ during her senior year and was baptized during this last 12 months in, in school. Uh, she is so thankful. Is it? Yes. She is so thankful that CDA not only is like to let her know things about the Lord, but also it's given her some of her best friends. And we are going to miss you, Madeline. Thank you so much. Yeah. Gabriella, Hannah Catino. <laughs> Gabriella is going to Texas A&M University, where she will double major in psychology and pre-law. So you're taking it easy in college. Yeah. Uh, my, my two, she says her two past accomplishments while at CDA are getting a full-ride scholarship to a professional dance program and also understanding physics. So thank you to Mrs. Schober, and thank you, Gabriella. Great job. <laughs> Dylan Cruz Chubb. <laughs> Dylan will also go to Texas A&M University, where, where he will major in industrial distribution. His greatest accomplishments during high school were becoming a Christian during the last four years, and also the service he has done at his church. He is very thankful for the way the Lord has sanctified him and used him in his church through VBS, through Awana, and also participating in the youth group. Thank you so much, Dylan. Great job, man. Patience, Irene Clevenger. <laughs> Pate's going to Florida College, where she will major in kinesiology as a, or in a preoccupational therapy. She's very proud that all four years at CDA, she has earned a summa cum laude during that whole time, and she has taught Bible classes to the children at her church, and we thank you also for the ministry and work you've done there. Thank you so much, Pate. Great job. Genevieve, Amanda Covert. <laughs> Jenny is going to Tulane University. Well, she will major in philosophy. She's participating in debates at CDA, and they have inspired her to pursue a degree in law and also allowed her to be, uh, build stronger public speaking and argumentative skills. Also, the curriculum at CDA, she believes, has allowed her to apply herself academically and, and shown her how to do her very best work. And we, we see that in you too, Jenny. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> Sally Page Davis. <laughs> Sally is going to major in communications at Baylor University. She was the captain of the CDA women's varsity volleyball team during her senior year. And also, she has served as a mentor to younger girls during for our mentor program at CDA. And we are very proud of the work you've done there. Thank you, Sally. Great job. <laughs> Alana Brooke Ebensberger. <laughs> Alana is going to major in psychology at Samford University. She is very proud of earning the Bronze Presidential Service Award, becoming an assistant dance teacher at a Time to Dance studio, and becoming a part of the worship team at Irving Bible Church, where I get to listen to her sing on Sundays. So great job, Alana. Thank, well, thank you so you. much. <laughs> Benjamin Robert Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Ben will also be an Aggie at Texas A&M University. He is going to major in civil engineering. Ben is proud that he has received magna cum laude in all four semesters that he has been at CDA. He believes that CDA has helped him to develop study habits and knowledge of academics that have helped him to reach his full potential as a student and will serve him well in college. He also finally remembers his time on the basketball team. For the past two years, he was privileged to play under wonderful coaches and share the court with awesome teammates. Great job, Ben. Thank you. Anna May Grace Guyon. <laughs> Anna's going to major in engineering at Texas A&M University. She, <laughs> um, besides her time and everything she's done at CDA, she's also played piano and danced competitively for the past 12 years. I'll keep up their education at CDA and still finishing strongly for us. And we are gonna miss you, Anna. Great job. Thank you. Ariana Renee Hartman. Yeah! Ari will double major in business and media management at Baylor University. She says that CDA has equipped her for life by challenging her to think more critically and has strengthened her presentation skills. 
She's learned to balance academics alongside her passions outside of school, and she knows everything she's learned at Quorum Day will set her up for success in the future. And that's certainly what we pray for you, too. Great job, Ari. Thank you so much. <laughs> River Trace Harvey. Yeah! River's going to major in biomedical science at Texas A&M University. He has earned summa cum laude every year from ninth through 12th grade, while at the same time becoming the captain of his baseball team during his senior year. And you have done a great job, River. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. Ryan Luke Henderson. <laughs> Ryan will be an Aggie, but for Oklahoma State University as a cowboy, <laughs> he is going to major in sports medicine. Ryan has served at Camp Blessing with other CDA students for three years and helping out special needs students as they, as they attend there. And he's also been a three-sport athlete all four years at CDA. You've been a blessing to all of us. Thank you so much, Ryan. <laughs> awesome. Jackson Todd Hilricks. Jackson is going to the University of Texas at Arlington, where he will major in architecture. He is most proud of his uh, academics and the entire Christ Center community that he was able to be a part of. But he's especially proud of the spiritual growth he's seen in his friends and how God has helped him as they have built each other up. And we are very proud of you also, Jackson, for that reason. Thank you so much. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ella Catherine Holland. Ella is going to Texas A&M University, and she is going to double major in nutrition and business and having a cool last name. She participated in varsity volleyball, and she, <laughs> yeah. She participated in varsity volleyball, and she is proud that she earned the highest marks in her senior author project about Jack London. So uh, call the wild or white thing. Yeah, both. Okay, all right, they're equal, they're both great. Great job, Ella, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sydney Grace Huggins. Sydney is going to major in psychology at the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> like Mrs. Dwyer. She, she is most proud of her time being a student athletic trainer for the CDA football team during her senior year. And also, she was able to graduate alongside wonderful friends that she has known since kindergarten. And we're very proud of you, too, Sydney. Thank you so much. Great job. <laughs> Taylor Janine Jason. Taylor is currently undecided on where she will go for school, but she knows that she wants to act. She is a major in theater. In fact, she received honorable mention at the TAPS District One at Play competition. And we have seen her do several things this year, including singing last night for us at the senior reception, which was very great. <laughs> great job, Taylor. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kaylee Autumn Jernigan. Kaylee is going to Belmont University. Yeah! <laughs> like those two. She is going to major, double major in entrepreneurship and finance. She was named captain of the CDA Lionettes for her senior year. And she also started the Fresh Produce Project, which donated 176 pounds of fresh produce for families in need through the Our Daily Bread Ministry in Denton, Texas. That's awesome, Kaylee. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. McKenna Elizabeth Johnson. <laughs> McKenna is going to Texas A&M University, where she will major in kinesiology. McKenna served, and she worked with me as one of the senior council members during this year, and she did a fantastic job at it. Uh, she thinks back to her time at CDA and winning regional soccer game in the ninth grade in the last 10 seconds, and she still remembers doing that with, the, with her teammates there. She remembers her friends and the people that she has been with in school since kindergarten. And she'd like you all to know that she's never done a rebuttal in debate at CDA. <laughs> Good job getting out of that. Good job, again. Thank you so much. Okay. Ava Grace Cooley. Ava's going to major in interior design at Abilene Christian University. Oh, my sleeves keep catching things. 
<clears throat> During her junior year, she received the Artis Elegantis Award, and then at the Truth, Goodness, and Beauty Art Competition, one of her drawings was awarded the best in show. We know she's going to use her art more in the future. Thank you so much, Ava Grace. Good job. <laughs> Caroline Moreau Coombs. <laughs> Caroline is going to go straight into her career in real estate after she leaves CDA. She is uh, proud that she was able to help build the CDA athletic training program and also that she volunteered at Camp Beloved and Beyond every year since the seventh grade in helping uh, students with special needs. Thank you so much, Caroline. Thank Great you. job. <laughs> Jeff Brian Lilly II. <laughs> JB is going to England to study at the University of Cambridge, where he will major in history and politics. Besides being good at speeches, like you heard earlier, he is also very proud to have served the senior class as a member of the senior council. He's also very honored to have received the Distinguished Student Award in his senior year. We are going to miss you. Great job, JB. Congratulations. <laughs> Lana Joy Leinbarger. Yeah. <laughs> Lana is going to Belmont University, where she will major in general business. She helped, she helped lead the student-run small group Bible study and worship event for the CDA rhetoric students called Be Lifted. She genuinely loves the CDA band, and she is devoted to the band community and received the Spiritual Leadership Award during this senior year. And uh, Lana, we are going to miss you. You've done such a great job. There you go. <laughs> Almost left me hanging there. Tessa Faith Leinbarger. Tessa is going to join her sister at Belmont University while she will major in, is it music business or music yeah, and business? In music business, <laughs> yep. Um, she has led worship all four years of high school, both at church and at CDA, and she has also been part of the Be Lifted student led Bible study for CDA students. Uh, she remembers finally that she was awarded the Artis Elegantis Award in her 11th grade uh, year and the John Philip Sousa Award for band this year. You've been such a great part of this, and thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Seth Michael Livingston. <laughs> Seth is going to the Colorado School of Mines, where he will major in mechanical engineering. Um, Seth has tried out twice for the USA Climbing Nationals and made it both times to competition. Uh, he also got a superior rating for five consecutive years for percussion, solo, and ensemble at state. Great job, Seth. Thank you so much. Joel William Mayer. Yeah. Joel is on the way to Hillsdale College, where he will major in financial management. He is very proud that he was a captain of the CDA baseball team, and then he received the highest honor at Canicook Camp, which is the I Am Third Award, which I believe means that he was very much exemplified that it is a God first and others second, and then ourselves. Uh, thank you so much for your student leadership. We are going to miss you, Joel. Thank you. Yeah. Zachary Daniel McCauley. Yeah. Zach is going to Wheaton College. He's going to major in mechanical engineering and play collegiate football for the school. Uh, he received the Toe the Rope Award and the inaugural Iron Lion Award during his junior year. And he's very proud that he was able to lead his football team to the playoffs during this year. And you have done a great job, Zach. Thank you so much. Glad you're here. <laughs> Hannah Marie McKittrick. <laughs> Hannah is going to major in political science at the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah was the third member of our senior council, and I'll say, just like I did with the others, she has been wonderful at leading her class. She's done such a great job at it this year. Uh, she is very proud that during this year, she ran a marathon in the midst of all the other work she was doing at the school. And she also uh, compete, sorry, not competed, uh, participated with several mission trips during an internship with East West, East West Missions. Where did you serve, by the way? Guatemala, that's awesome, yeah. <laughs> Great job, Hannah, thank you so much. <laughs> there you go. Abigail Grace Patnode. Yeah! 
Abba is going to St. Mary's College, where, where she will play collegiate soccer and also major in global studies. She's very proud that she was able to serve as the captain of the CDA women's soccer team all four years of rhetoric school. And then she earned an A on her senior author project. Who is your author? Uh, Edith Wharton. Edith Wharton. Nice. And for having the greatest team mom in the world. So <laughs> great job, man. Great job, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ashlyn, Renee, Richard, nope. Yeah. nope. I skipped someone. Ryan, Paul, Pelletier. Yeah. Yeah. Tur turned the page too fast. Uh, Ryan is going to Texas A&M University. Well, he will major in, fi in finance. <laughs> Ryan served as co-captain of the CDA men's soccer team, and he received honorable mention at the TAPS one-act play competition during his senior year. Great job, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace Perone. Yeah! Lizzie is going to Oklahoma City University, where she will major in musical theater. Lizzie is one of 15 students accepted into the musical theater programs of Oklahoma City University and Belmont University. And she's very proud of her time when she got to play Joe Marsh in two different productions of the musical Little Women. And we have seen you on stage in so many ways throughout these last four years. It's been great, Lizzie. So thank you so much. Good job. <laughs> now, Ashlyn Renee Richard. <laughs> will attend Dallas Baptist University, where she will major in communications. Ashlyn's participated in the CDA Girls Mentor Program since the sixth grade. She was a mentee then, and she's been a mentor in high school as she has helped lead the program as a senior. She's also greatly honored to be the chaplain for Electus Vox, the choir that you heard earlier, over the past three years. You have done a great job, Ashlyn. Thank you so much. <laughs> Michaela Faith Richardson. <laughs> Michaela is going to major in archaeology at Leiden University in the Netherlands, which that's, that's awesome, man. That's so cool. Um, she worked at the Humane Society of North Texas, and, she, and while doing her work there, she received the Volunteer Hero of the Year Award. She's also very happy about the work she's able to accomplish during her high school mission trips. And where did you go on your mission trips? He's awesome. Yeah, doing some work there. Thank you once again for your work in ministry to the Lord. Great job, Michaela. Thank you. Tommy Dean Robertson. Tommy is also going to take a gap year this year as he evaluates where to go next with his educational career. But he also says he's very proud of his time at CDA that he was able to make it to state for TAPS One Eye Play. And he was also part of the ensemble that sang at the Diamonds and Bowtie Ball. And by the way, Tommy is really, really funny and good at debate, as we have seen several times. <laughs> Great job, Tommy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Caden Swain Rogers. Caden is going to Samford University, where he would major in biblical studies. And by the way, more than once I've caught Caden praying for his friends in the hallway or in the bathrooms. It truly is his heart to be in ministry. Uh, he has served at Camp Beloved and Beyond for the past two years, and this year you got to earn all district in football. Thank you so much, Katie. Great job. Thank you. Bethany Grace Sanders. <laughs> Bethany will major in business management at Texas A&M University. She has served on five mission trips, both with her youth group at our church and at our seat and during the and with the CDA Choir, and that places include Galveston and Memphis and Alaska and Costa Rica. As a member of the Alestis Vox Select Choir, she has served as an officer for two years. She was selected for All Region Choir for two years, and she has received several Division I ratings at solo and ensemble competitions. Great job, Bethany. Thank you so much. <laughs> Benjamin Watson Sheegan. Ben is going to enter the pre-med track at Austin College. He is very proud of his time at CDA, that he is uh, stuck with CD athletics every year of high school, while at the same time maintaining academic honors while being a football player, running track, and playing basketball. Great job, Ben. Thank you so much. You. 
Jacob Connor Sims. Jacob is going to study biomedical science at Texas A&M University. He, he has made all region choir for two years, both in the 10th and the 12th grades, and he loves this time he got to uh, uh, go to Disney World with the choir, or with the band in 9th and 12th grades. And from what I hear, you provide comic relief often during Muster Huddleston's class. <laughs> so great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren Leanne Smith. Lauren is, going to, Lauren is going to Texas A&M University, where she will major in cellular and molecular biology. Lauren was very proud that she's able to serve as a captain for the CDA girls soccer team her senior year, and that she achieved her goal of becoming summa cum laude every year since she was a freshman. Thank you so much, Lauren. You've done a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle Kayla Vitapil. Michelle is going to be a Bearcat at Sam Houston State University, where she will major in criminal justice. Michelle has excelled in art and choir and soccer, in addition to juggling her schoolwork. But she was very happy to receive, sorry, she was very happy to receive many of those awards, but her most important gift were the relationships that she built with the people around her, and most importantly, her team, which made district playoffs every year in soccer. We are going to miss you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Madeline Olivia Wilson. Madeline will go into the pre-med program at Colorado Christian University. She was on the cheer team for six years, and they went to nationals and state competitions back to back, taking first place. And this year, she also served as a senior cheer captain. We are going to miss you, Madeline. Great job. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Congratulations to the class of 2022. <laughs> We're going to wait for just a minute. <laughs> no, she's fine, she's fine. <laughs> Okay, one more time. Can you please give a hand to the class of 2022? Thank you. <laughs> now, graduates, please stand. Graduates of Coram Deo Academy, class of 2022, as the Apostle Paul charged young Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, so we charge you. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you were made, your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our hope for you is found in Proverbs 2, which says, Receive my words and treasure up my commandments making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, you call out for insight and raise your voice in understanding if you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you. Commencement is not an end, but rather it is a beginning. As these students commence into their next journey, let us praise God through song, committing to our Lord to pray for these who stand before us, that they may stay firm in their faith, honoring God and praising him throughout their lives. 
Please stand and let's sing along. Seniors, please stand. <laughs> Congratulations. You may now turn your tassels. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege and my pleasure to present to you the graduates of Coram Deo Academy of 2022.
excited for a few announcements and our closing prayer. Thank you to the Village Church of Flower Mount. Yes. And to Matt Chandler. We want to thank them for their generosity in allowing us to use their beautiful facility. If you have no church home, please, please take this opportunity to seek a Trinitarian church, theologically sound and based upon the historical biblical worldview. This worldview is the basis of the faith statements at Coram Deo Academy, and we appreciate all the churches that stand alongside us in this changing world. As you leave tonight, be good stewards, pick up around you and help leave this church as beautifully as we found it. Now, please welcome to the stage Mr. and Mrs. Perrone for our closing prayer. Mr. and Mrs. Perrone, they have five, now, five graduates of Coram Deo Academy, Samuel, Anna, Mary, and Michael have all become successful in their fields and college, with it should be noted Mary being the creator of the new plaid that now bears the name Coram Deo for the Lance Inn uniform line that we will wear. Tonight, Elizabeth, Lizzie, your last child, joins this family's CDA graduates. We thank you for your service to Coram Deo Academy. And while we will sadly be without Perones, for the first time since 2007. We are thankful to have had your support these many years and we will miss your family. Just bow your heads with me, please. Uh, dear Lord, we lift up these graduates and thank you so much for giving us this joyous culmination of their journey. We thank you for your guiding hand and your many blessings throughout the years for these students, their families, and their teachers. As these young men and women start the next chapter of their lives, we pray that you continue to guide them. When faced with boundless opportunities, we pray that they will choose the narrow path that you have crafted, the path that is good and straight and true. We pray that they will always believe that happiness, joy, and success come through you and your grace. We thank you for the abilities of these students, and we pray not only that they find success in whatever they do, but that each of them will be ambassadors for Christ, that they will be agents for change, to have the boldness to bring the gospel to the many who will cross their paths who so desperately need to know you. We know that in all things, you work for the good of those who love you, who have been called according to your purpose. We pray that you be the purpose in whatever these graduates do, while always giving them the confidence and humility to let their little light shine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you for coming this evening. Congratulations to the graduates. May God bless you and your family and graduates. And please take this opportunity to go join the cheering crowd. <laughs> Good night.
Uh, if alumni could come on forward, that would be great. Alumni, head to the front. Thanks, Wes.